Regular viewers of the show will know that I try and make a point of drawing attention to those who give of themselves to help others and so contribute to making uh, Britain great. My great Britain tonight is Simon Lee from Kent who endeavours to help those suffering from anxiety and all sorts of other challenges uh, in all their various forms and manifestations. Over three decades, Simon has established himself as a pioneer, seeking new ways to coach personal development and to develop mental strength. Good evening, Simon. Good evening. What led you in this direction? You know, three decades in, what, what was it that made you think, I can, I can better direct people? Well, for me, it was, it was a, an unfolding of my life, really. I came out of a very challenging childhood. Um, it's very difficult. Um, but, and it was a masterclass in how weak men create tough times. Um, so we went through some very challenging situations. But this experience was a necessity because, because it was so painful and so difficult. It, I wouldn't be able to do what I do today unless I'd been through that. So actually, looking back on it, I'm glad it happened because I gained so much knowledge. It, it feels, often feels to me at the moment that we're in the mess we're in, in the world, in this country, because of weak people. Absolutely, absolutely. I really believe that. I mean, as a, as a child, I, I saw it firsthand. I, I, I felt the experience up close of, of exactly how cruel they can be. And, you know, there's a societal belief that a strong man can be a problem, but there's nothing compared to what a weak man will do. It's, it's a real issue. So coming out of that experience, I couldn't stay as I was. I had chronic depression, chronic anxiety. I was extremely um, traumatised and I didn't even know it was trauma. No one spoke about it decades ago. So I thought, I, I can't live like this, so I'm going to go out and find a way, find my own path so I can overcome this and build a character I could be proud of and show people once I got there how to do the same. And that was the journey. And what did you do? What, did, what kind of challenges did you set yourself and how did you navigate a way back to a better frame of mind? Well, I made some big mistakes. The first big mistake was um, I won a um, Southern England bodybuilding title, which, which did take a lot of discipline. Um, but it was all about external validation. I became how I looked. So I stood on stage with this first place trophy and I thought, I'm still absolutely terrified. And so after that, I went into a huge depression because I realised it hadn't worked. And I went back to the martial arts after that. I did feel a full ill for a long time because I, my first addiction in life was overtraining. And I think when you're um, a child, the first thing you find to soothe your own pain becomes your most potent addiction later on. For me, it was exercise. It's the only way I could find to soothe my pain. But ultimately, it, it led me to um, a long path of illness. How, how then did you find an equilibrium to the extent that you felt able, that you, you felt equipped with something that you could pass on to others? Well, I am, um, falling ill was actually, um, I think it saved my life because I then went into mindfulness meditation. I looked, I started really delving into Zen Buddhism, Stoic philosophy, and these ancient philosophies that was all about peace, um, courage and integrity. And I felt like I found the holy grail. These things were so powerful. It was what I was looking for. So I, I put together a, a system I could and I went out and I started, I started teaching. So I went around local hospitals talking about my recovery, talking about these philosophies and the, the interest just built up gradually over time. And what kind of people are, are you able to help? Is it, is it all ages? Is it, you know, is it people who are coming out of trauma? Is it people just in, yes, I in, mean, in normal life? Who, who, I had to change. I know some... some um, some teachers are also talking about this, but I had to change the narrative of trauma because I really believe in post-traumatic growth over post-traumatic harm. So when I started to give talks in schools and I go talks to, to young men, I used to say, who here put your hand up? Who's had, who's had a tough time? If it was the children, I'd say, have your mum and dad split up? Have you been through some tough times? And you'd always get a minority of hands going up. And I'd say, you've got more potential than anybody else in the room. And for the first time, they'd all look at each other and think, wow, no one's ever said that before. I thought we were supposed to feel sorry for ourselves. I thought, I thought we were supposed to be victims. So I had to change the narrative because I knew that that was true. So you see trauma as opportunity, as Absolutely. opposed to handicap? Absolutely. Hugely. It is a portal to potential, no doubt. It's an interesting twist on things, isn't it, Julie? That idea, because we are, we are increasingly told to talk about our troubles, but that, that in itself breeds a kind of 
uh, victimhood, doesn't it? I agree. I think there is... Uh, it's interesting what you're saying. There's a strong pushback now. I think people are more and more saying about post-traumatic post uh, growth rather than post-traumatic stress. And as you say, if you can channel that, instead of weeping over it or, or uh, who knows how we'd all behave in that environment, but if you can channel that into something positive and to help others, then more power to you. Absolutely. I do think there is an enticement, though, in modern society and modern culture to be the victim, mm. to not go forward, to not do something with it. And it can be, it can be, that itself can become an addiction. I've noticed that a lot of... It's so empowering to change the language. The it is. Just, the way just changing the language. It is. We just did, they can imagine a, a room full of children, those that feel that they've been damaged by what's happened to them, and you've just told them that they've got greater potential. That's so empowering for a child it to is. hear. It is. They, they've, no one's told them that. Everyone else is saying, we poor hope you. you can cope, let's yeah. see a poor you, um, this shouldn't have happened. Of course those things are true, but you've got to lead them somewhere else, otherwise they just stay there. Yeah. What about the, you know, I know that you're very invested in, uh, you know, exercise and training and, and martial arts. What is it that you feel martial arts gives someone who has trauma or who has you know, some kind of anxiety that they need Well, to I, I think there's a quote by Winston Churchill, and I really like it. He said, um, be kind, but be fierce. And I think what trauma does, it disconnects you from your sense of self. And you end up, and I was a very, very broken young man myself, but you need that... Um, a man and a woman needs that fierce aspect as well because the fierceness will push you forward, it will let you chase your dreams, it will protect you. The kindness will instill integrity and be compassionate to your fellow, fellow man. Um, I didn't have any fierceness. It was locked in me and I couldn't access it. I was terrified of everything. So I took up martial arts to find that fierceness. And wow, when I opened that door, I had trouble controlling it for a while because it was unknown territory. I hadn't explored there. So then I had this other struggle of getting it on a leash. But once I did, it was just a form of empowerment and it gave me conviction in my beliefs, in my words and how I lived. Jordan Peterson says over and over again, talking to young men, that they need to know that, there's, that there is a monster inside Absolutely. of all of us. Absolutely. And if you pretend to yourself that you're only nice, then you're much more dangerous than someone who has identified the fact that they're capable of the terrible. Absolutely. And they know it's there and they control it, master it, challenge it, and that makes them a much more complete person than someone who just says, I'm just a nice guy. And that's why the, most of the men that I coach, when I say to them, who's your screen hero, they point towards Daniel Craig, because they want that robust, ultra-masculine part of them within themselves so that they can bring a balance to who they are. So it, it, it's, a really, it's a really big one, that, that creation and chaos, that, ability, that dark and light nature of a man. It makes him more... He's the one that won't be cruel because he has it under control. He's the one that will, be, will do great things. He will be just. He will be strong. Tony, in these times of, where we, we've heard so much for years about toxic masculinity, I think it, particularly I feel it in relation to... You know, I've got two sons. I've got a daughter, but I've got two sons. And I, I feel that they need that positive, that positive message that they, they do have something very important to give, absolutely by dint of being male. Absolutely. So, like you, I've got, I've got two boys too, and, and it, they're being demasculinated all the time and told that they can't be real men, that they can't, you know, stro sh stro strength because then it's toxic. It's not. I'm going to have I want to cut it short man. there, Simon. That was brilliant. I'm going to have to move on into the break, but thank you. No Sorry to cut you short <laughs> That's there. That's OK. <laughs>